Hi, my name is Jonathan Ross, field agronomist for Pioneer, and today I'd like to take a little bit of time and talk with, you, talk with you about tissue analysis. Now, tissue analysis is, in a sense, similar to soil sampling and everything else. It's just a continuation of our quest of figuring out what is available to that plant to create yield. So the nutrition in the soil that we've tested this last fall and, and tried to make amendments and, and such to get ready for this, uh, this season, now we're going to move to tissue sampling to fully understand how that crop is doing at harvesting the nutrition in the soil. Now there's some very basic things that you're gonna wanna have for tissue analysis. Um, some of the necessities obviously are uh, you're gonna want to get with whatever your preferred lab is and get a sampling bag as well as um, a, a submittal form. You want distilled water and we'll talk about this in a minute but we want especially on these smaller plants to wash the plants to make sure we don't have any fertility products or soil splash or anything like that. Along with that we'll need paper towels in order to dry those off for submission and then we'll, uh, you know, need a, a knife or, you know, um, clippers or something like that for actually going and harvesting. Lastly, maybe some people want to grab a bucket or something along those lines just to throw those samples in. You're going to want to make sure it's a clean bucket to throw those samples in as you go across the field. If by chance you're uh, in the same field harvesting multiple zones that you want a tissue sample, one helpful thing is to have uh, some clean plastic bags that you can then, you know, line your bucket, put those samples down in, and whenever you go to another zone, toss that down in, next bag on, and continue into your zones. All right, now before we get into, so into uh, tissue sampling itself, I want to talk real quick about leaf staging corn, because this is pretty important for whenever we're talking about tissue sampling. So when we leaf stage corn, we're going and we're counting the collars on the corn plant. Now, it's important to make sure that we start with this first little ovulate leaf. That would be the first leaf out. Um, when we start with that, uh, you know, we'll count up. And again, it's the full collared um, leaves. So in this sense, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. This is a V6 plant right here. The sixth collar has, has fully emerged. We can see it the whole way. But if you notice, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine leaves visible. This is not a V9 plant, it's V6 because of those collars. Now, when we take our tissue samples, we're going to take randomized plants throughout the field. You can decide whether you wanna take transects across the field, whether you wanna go up and down rows throughout the field, however you decide. But what you wanna make sure is that you're not only sampling from the best areas of the field or the worst areas of the field or things like that. Try to randomize the sample. Once we're done with sampling that plant, we're going to come back and we're going to prepare our samples for submission. So this is where all of this comes in. So here are the plants that I've gone ahead and sampled. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and in order to kind of make a little bit of a, you know, I don't know if you say sterile environment, but you know, I'm gonna take these paper towels and, and toss some out on my tailgate here. And then we're gonna take this, these and, and we're gonna wash them. Now, this is something that, you know, there's multiple ways to do this. Some folks will lay the plants out and miss them. Um, I tend to rinse them off a lot. One of the things that's important to think about is we want to use distilled water. Distilled water has, you know, no nutrition and it's not going to have any um, salts or anything like that that might get into our sample and make us think, you know, that we've got a problem. So I'll try to get a lot of water down in through there, um, you know, trying to make sure that if there's any soil particles or stuff, I can, I can really get that off and rinse. Um, I might do that a couple of times in order just to make certain. We're gonna to wanna to do this to any sample that we do. And again, this is extremely important on these smaller plants. Whenever we're actually leaf sampling later on in the season and it's up in the canopy, unless we've put some nutrition over top of that, this isn't as, problem. It isn't as big of a problem. But for these, you gotta remember, they're sitting out there, they're pretty close to the soil surface. We get a rain event, that soil can splash up and can create issues. So once we, uh, once we have those um, kind of, you know, rinsed off, we'll go ahead and, and lay them down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to just go through the process of drying these things off and, and in that process also continuing to clean and, and wipe anything off that might be on there.
So I'll just go ahead. We're going to we're gonna um, wipe this off multiple times, keep on cleaning it up, and I'll be right back with you. All right, so we've got our plants all cleaned up here and ready for submission. Now it's time to go ahead and, and fill this out. You know, one of the big things, again, is making sure that we have the leaf stage correct. You'll know your grower name, everything else. V6 is kind of the transition. I want to talk just a moment about really small corn and then larger corn. So typically what we think about is 12 inches or smaller corn. We're going to take that whole plant. So just like we did today, take something out, cut it off right at the soil surface, take that entire plant and submit that as your sample. Once we hit that 12, 12 inches and above, then we start thinking about going to the uh, most recent fully emerged leaf. So going back to our example here of this V6 plant that we have, that most recent, we're going to go from the top down and look for that collared leaf. So if we were not submitting this whole plant, we would simply take that co collared leaf and submit it. Now, at this stage, I'm still for V6, even though it's it's kind of at that stage where we're getting a little bit past uh, a foot, I'm going to submit the entire plant. Now, at this point, if we've got a really big field and we have a lot of sample, we may need to randomize that sample and go in and, and collect uh, some multiples. Here, I just took a small transect through a field here. I've got 10 samples. And again, depending on how you're sampling, you can you know lengthen up in between samples to try to, to, tr to, try to get that or or you know, randomize or however you want. At that point in time, we're just simply taking these uh, samples. We're gonna put them all together, and you know, very simply, we start to put them across, and we can get them down in that sample bag. Again, this is gonna be about the largest sample that you take as a V6 sampling. Um, the rest of the time, you're just dealing with some leaf tissue, so it's a lot easier at that point in time uh, as far as what you're getting in. Now it is uh, worthwhile saying right now at this point that when you're thinking about submitting samples, if you're gonna have to hold the sample for a period of time, it's best to keep it refrigerated. One of the things we don't want is we don't want a lot of excess moisture on that if it's going to stick for a while, so make sure that you dry it off fairly well. Again, tissue sampling is just one of those waypoints that we have throughout the year. We know that we've got certain soil uh, nutrition, we've soil tested, we've, we've done our amendments, we've done all sorts of things now we start the story of trying to get this crop to the best place. However, the story is not over just with the submittal of the sample. Sometimes the hardest part is whenever we take that sample and we get results and knowing what to do with those results. For this, may I suggest to you looking at our most recent agronomy research summary. Our main article in that is talking about sufficiency ranges that we've put together because of tremendous amounts of research, thousands and thousands of samples that have been submitted um, through agronomists like myself, through our PKP efforts, in order to look at what different sufficiency ranges tend to lead towards yield. So the thing that's important to understand about this is we're not simply taking that sufficiency range and saying this is where we think the healthy plan is. We've taken those plots clear to yield and then gone back and correlated for the highest yielding plots what were those sufficiency ranges that we were seeing for a broad uh, myriad of elements of nutrition. So go ahead and, and get that research summary or you can find it online um, and, and look at those sufficiency ranges when you get your reports back. Again, on behalf of Pioneer Agronomy, this is Jonathan Rotz. Thank you for your time and attention. And if you have any questions, obviously reach out to your local Pioneer sales representative myself, your agronomist, territory manager, anyone else. I hope this is helpful and useful information, and I hope you have a great year and lots of success with your Pioneer products. Thank you. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.